Today's program is brought to you by The Journey Christian Magazine, a free monthly direct mail publication. It's also available free online at journeychristianmagazine.com. They're offering all 2018 issues for free if you sign up on the website. That's journeychristianmagazine.com. You'll find timely articles about God, Christian living, outreach, faith, parenting, and much more. The Journey Christian Magazine, encouraging Christians on their walk with Christ. It's time for Living with Victory, a program of hope and encouragement brought to you by Living with Victory Ministries and listeners like you. Now, here are your hosts, Laureen and Tony Giorgio, with today's message of perseverance. Hey, welcome to Living with Victory, where life isn't about waiting for the storms to pass. It's about learning to have peace, joy, and victory in the midst of the storm because Jesus is your umbrella. Morning, this is Tony Giorgio. Welcome to another program of Living with Victory. We have a new sponsor for our programming, the blessed people at the Journey Christian Magazine. We welcome them today. It's a direct mail publication and it's distributed to over 5,000 Christian households. You can go to our website at livingwithvictory.org, click on the Journey Christian Magazine logo, and it will bring you to a page where you can actually get your free subscription. Tell them Tony sent you. No, it won't do you a bit of good. It's free anyway. And also, if you want to reach Tony or Laureen, you can go to that website I just mentioned, livingwithvictory.org. And you can hit the contact page and let us know if you need prayer requests there. You can write them up. If you want to order some of the books, we we have been giving away Mr. Graham's books, The Journey. If you would like a copy of that, we would love to send it to you in celebration of his 100th year. And just put down your address, though. Some of you aren't leaving your mailing address, so we can't send the book. So if you want the book, do leave that address. If you want to comment on the program, We'd love to hear from you. And also, there's a donate button there. Okay, so that's up to you, but we are listener-driven. Let's get on with the program. And I have my wonderful sidekick for 50 years. Here goes another year, 51. (laughs) (laughs) It'll be here before Before you know it. Before you know it, right? (laughs) Okay. Today, we're going to talk about when we pray, do we receive Now, a storm comes our way and we begin to pray. We are fully aware that we are in a situation that goes way beyond our abilities to discern which path to take. When we start praying, do we really know who we are praying to? Are we really praying or telling God how we think he should take care of this storm? It's fine to pray for what we would like, but are we willing to take and accept what he wants to give us, his way, his will, and his timing. Are we ready to receive his answer? Do we ignore it and think to ourselves, that can't be right. It doesn't even come close to how I wanted the answer to come. Why isn't God listening? Or should it be, why aren't we listening and not hearing him? The scripture today is Acts 12, 4, 16. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing. I will paraphrase it. Peter was uh, seized, and he was put in prison. He was delivered to four squads of soldiers, of four each to guard him. They were going to kill Peter after the Passover. Actually, they would have killed him right then and there if the Passover hadn't started. Now, Peter was kept in prison, but Verse 5 says, fervent prayer and fervent prayer for him was persistently made to God by the church, the assembly of the church. 
Now, the very night before Herod was about to bring him out, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers fastened with two chains and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared standing beside him, and a light shone in the place where he was. The angel gently smote Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly, and the chains fell off his hands. Now the angel said to him, Tighten your belt, bind your sandals, and he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your outer garment around you and follow me. Peter went out following him, and he was not conscious that what was apparently being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed through the first guard, and the second they came to the iron gate which leads into the city. Of its own accord, the gate opened, and they went out and passed on through one street, and at once the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself, now I really know and am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting to do to me. When he, at a glance, became aware of this, comprehending all the elements of the case, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose son name was Mark, where a large number were assembled together and were praying. Now remember, verse 5 said they were praying fervently, persistently. He knocked at the gate of the porch. Rhoda, who was the maid, came to answer. And recognizing Peter's voice and her joy, she failed to open the gate, but ran in and told the people that Peter was standing before the porch gate. They said to her, you are crazy. Can't be. Well, we're praying that Peter will be released, that God will save Peter, but you're crazy. It can't be him. (laughs) But she persistently and strongly and confidently affirmed that it was the truth. They said, it is his angel. Number two, coming up with all reasons why it couldn't be Peter. And poor Peter is standing out there knocking on that gate. Uh, Let uh. me in. (laughs) And when they finally realized to open that gate, they were amazed. When we are praying, and we are praying and praying and praying, and we say, why isn't God answering? Are we recognizing the answer, or are we saying, God can't mean that to be my answer. There was this man that was in a boat, boat capsized, he's in the water, and he's praying to God to save him and help him out of this. There's a helicopter that passes by, and the guy's going to send down a ladder, and he said, no, 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 that's okay, my God's going to help me out of this, don't worry about it, sends him away. Next, somebody comes alongside in a boat, and they throw him a life raft, and he said, no, 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 he pushes it back, my God is going to save me, you know, he's going down for the second time now. And then somebody else comes by to try to help him out. No, no, it's okay. God's going to save me. Don't worry about it. He's down for the third time. Third time, he doesn't come back up. Okay, so he gets up there before the pearly gates, as they say. And, and he's there, and, he, and, he, and he's before God. And he said, he said I, I, I prayed about getting saved, and I counted on you, and, and, and nothing happened. I, I died. I, I, I lost the, the battle, you know. <laughs> God said, I sent you the helicopter, you turned it away. I sent somebody with a life raft, you sent them away. I threw you a life preserver, and you threw it away. He said, I gave you everything you needed, but you didn't want it. Are you keeping Peter or God outside the gate while he's knocking? You know, (laughs) you're praying, and you're praying, and you're praying, and you don't see it. Here's another quick story that could tie this together. We were down in Florida because there was nothing. I don't know, you may have heard this before. In New York, couldn't get a job after getting out of college with a degree and all of that. We went to my cousin Vinny. Yes, I had a cousin Vinny. We went down to Florida to find work because he said there was plenty of work. Well, I fasted for two weeks. I decided, okay, Lord, I'm going to be conscious about this. I'm praying and fasting for this job because I just graduated with a degree in business administration and accounting and you name it. I did. I Right? I fasted for two weeks, yes, me, did. without food in my mouth. A call comes in. 
And it was a linen supply company. They delivered, you know, tablecloths to restaurants and hospital linens for, you know, scrubs and things like that, uniforms. And they offer me this job. I get a job. And the guy says to me, we have an opening. It's a truck driving job. You pick up dirty linens. And I said, God, (laughs) here's the life raft. Remember, here's the life raft. And I'm saying, yeah, but I I fast and I prayed and I'm looking to use my bachelor's degree. I'm looking for the management position. I'm going to drive a truck and pick up dirty linen? I came all the way to Florida, 90 degree heat? Wait a minute. So we talked about it. And of course, I said, well, look, it's a job, you know. At this point, here I am. I moved and everything. Let me take the job. So I'm on the job a little bit. Not eh, maybe a month, say. And I'm driving this truck was at least 40 years old. All of a sudden, I get a call to come up to the boss's office. And he sits me down and he said, you know, we're regrouping a few things here. And I noticed that on your application, you have a degree in business administration and accounting. And I said, yeah. He said, what we're doing is we're consolidating our inventory of all three. They had three divisions in Fort Lauderdale, and they're consolidating it under one central roof, the warehouse, and we're going to operate out of a central location. We would like you to take over our warehouse and become the warehouse supervisor. I almost fell off my chair, actually. I I wasn't there, what, but a month or two? Right. You leave it to God if you're praying, No, you, not you. I, I know what you want and what you're praying for, but God sees the future. If I'd have turned down that job because I had to drive a truck, there's nothing wrong with driving a truck, and I loved it. I, I loved driving anyway. The point is he knew that job was there, but he wanted me to have the faith to follow through with my prayers and trust him. I also was promoted to purchasing manager in the warehouse. Of course, I'm in Fort Lauderdale, it's 90 degrees, there's no office, I got a little table and a chair, and I gotta tell you this one, because this one I will never (laughs) ever forget. I used to bring Laureen in and pay her a few dollars to help. When my boss saw the work she did in the record keeping, he made her an offer she couldn't refuse to come and work and be the office manager. She comes on board. He bills her an office inside that warehouse that I didn't have. I'm sweating bullets, as they say. She gets an air-conditioned office, okay? And I said, sure. In that prayer and fasting, if I didn't take it to heart and say, okay, Lord, you know, move forward and go, he knows I left it to him. I had never been in management. And before we go forward, let me quickly, again, remind you, you can contact us if you like. Prayer requests, comments, we welcome them. Negative, positive, doesn't matter. At livingwithvictory at gmail.com. That's livingwithvictory at gmail.com. And also, you can go to the website, livingwithvictory.org, and hit the contact page. And if you want to order Mr. Graham's book, the journey, you're welcome to do that. But please leave us your mailing address. It's absolutely free. It's our gift celebrating his 100th year. You can also go on that website to subscribe to the Journey Christian Magazine. Just a quick reminder going into this new year, Living with Victory Ministries is working with children's hospitals uh, around the United States. And Arnold Palmer Children's Hospital is one in the Orlando area. We are helping working families who cannot qualify for transportation assistance to buy gas cards for them, give them to the social workers to distribute. With your help, we can do this. Together, we can make a difference. So don't forget that. It's called Fuel for Life. Thank you. Back to the program. Okay. So once again, you know, take a look at your storm that you're going through. And ask yourself if maybe you should change a few things of how you're handling that storm. Are you really turning that storm totally over to Jesus? 
are you leaving him outside of the gate and he's knocking and can't come in? Because he won't come in unless we open that gate. You know, you have to really sometimes stop and think uh, if you have to change how you worship or how you believe or, or how you choose to have faith. Because a lot of uh, walking with the Lord is, is a choice. And uh, thank God we do have a choice. We're not stuck to do it just one way. No. You know, God does give us that choice. I just want to read the meaning of the word receive. To take or receive something offered. Receive with approval or favor. To accept a present. To accept a proposal. Mm. But we have to be open. Our ears have to be open to God to receive that. But the words receive, I looked up the, the thesaurus. It also says accept, secure, and gain. Now accept means secure, welcome, gain, and acquire. Secure and gain are in there in those two places twice. So I looked up the word secure. Now this, this I think you're going to like. Mm. Protected, out of harm's way, undamaged, guarded, unharmed, unassailable, riskless, sheltered, immune, shielded, defended. Who does that sound like? Isn't that God's personality and attributes. Yes. I mean, that's who he is. And when we do it his way and put our self-will aside and decide to just really abandon yourself to him, we will be protected out of harm's way, undamaged, guarded, unharmed, unassailable, riskless, sheltered, immune, shielded, and defended. And gain means progress, improvement, growth, benefit, increase, and advancement. And can I, and I just throw something in here that I read sure. this morning from my utmost for his highest. I, I thought this was really good, especially for the uh, new year coming in, but it, it's also subtitled here is security for today, all right? And it, it says, you know, you shall not go out with haste. As we go forth into the coming year, let it not be in the haste of impetuous, forgetful delight, nor with the quickness of impulsive thoughtlessness, but let us go out with the patient power of knowing that the God of Israel, the God of Israel, will go before us. Our yesterdays hold broken and irreversible things for us. It is true that we have lost opportunities that will never return. But God can transform this destructive anxiety that we carry into a constructive thoughtfulness for the future. Remember that. We're dealing with God. Leave it to God. Let the past rest, but let it rest in the sweet embrace of Christ. Leave the broken irreversible past in his hands when you pray leave it in his hands and step out into the invincible future with him i thought that was really good i, I mean it really helped me a lot that is really exactly what walking with god is all about we all make mistakes. Lord knows we made it with our restaurant, and God was trying to give us another business that would have been so much more lucrative. Oh, God. And we wouldn't have been as tired to run it. But we insisted, and I have to say, on having our own way. And a lot of the times, 
the storms that we find ourselves in, we kind of helped along because we insisted on doing it our way instead of having the faith in him to listen to him, even though we didn't quite understand why he was sending us in another direction. Well, that's like praying and praying for Peter to get out of jail. He's at the door and they're saying, you're out of your mind. It's an angel. It's his spirit. It's this. It's that. What were you praying for? I mean, really, how could we not get to receive him i mean i have to say even with these people in this chapter don't bother to pray if you're not really going to expect that god is going to answer you yeah and when you get the answer you don't like (laughs) don't throw it away but they got the answer (laughs) they they wanted and they were still refusing to believe that he was giving it to them I, I think the believing when you're praying has a lot to do with this. I don't really think they felt that, yeah, let's all pray. We have to pray. You know, we do that all the time. Yeah, let's get together and pray. Not really believing that that's going to happen because in their mindset, he's in prison. It is our humanness that makes us that way, not realizing You've got the I am on your side. But that's why God's word says not to look to the left or to the right, to keep your eyes turned, focused to him, keep your eyes on him at all times, because the moment you look full in his wonderful face, there is that old hymn, turn your eyes upon Jesus. I love it. When you're really into the Lord and have him in your spirit, and you walk with him, you have to think, we're human beings, we're mortals, we're absolutely nothing like the omnipresent Lord of Lords, and yet he's man. We can't explain that, but there's power there. And there's a scripture that we have on our bookmark, and it says, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. And that's because of Jesus Christ. He's our buffer. And that's the the 2 Corinthians 4, 8. You know, I know, that if I'm where I should be in my faith and my walk with him, if I'm starting to feel an unbelief, anxiety, fear, uncertainty, then I have to say, Lord, forgive my unbelief. I can't do this without you. Help me to strengthen my faith, and then my joy and peace and victory come. And you can know by that where you are at this point. There's nothing wrong with, you know, like Tony said, being weak. It's okay. He knows that. That's why he came and he died. But the fact is we have to choose to turn our life over to him because he is the only one who can give us a victorious life. You know, it's like us. We never, never dreamed that we would be on the air on one of the most powerful media broadcasts in the Christian talk area. And yet they came to us. So we're blessed. We are absolutely blessed. Yes, we are. It's a humbling experience to think that we're here talking to you throughout the world. So with that, I want to remind you, when you get on your knees, remember who you're praying to, the I am, and leave it there. Okay? And this is Tony. And Laureen. Hey, you have a great week. We'll see you next week. Happy New Year. And remember... Jesus is your umbrella in the storm. Today's program is brought to you by The Journey Christian Magazine, a free monthly direct mail publication. It's also available free online at journeychristianmagazine.com. They're offering all 2018 issues for free if you sign up on the website. That's journeychristianmagazine.com. You'll find timely articles about God, Christian living, outreach, faith, parenting, and much more. The Journey Christian Magazine, encouraging Christians on their walk with Christ. There's a promise coming down that dusty road. From His holy hand, healing virtue flows. He's got the keys to what you need. Death and hell He will defeat. There's a promise coming down that dusty road. 
You've been listening to Living with Victory with your hosts, Laureen and Tony Giorgio, who for over 30 years have advocated for seriously ill children through Compassion Children's Foundation, today known as Living with Victory Ministries. Support for this radio ministry and our outreach programs comes from listeners like you. Many families who have children that require daily treatments for their illness are extremely challenged to get those life-saving treatments due to the cost of getting there. Our Fuel for Life outreach supplies gas cards to these families at four children's hospitals, including Arnold Palmer Hospital in Orlando. We've also given away over 2,000 of Lorraine's CD, Test of Faith, to breast cancer patients, documenting her own struggle with cancer, giving hope and encouragement through her experience in faith. You can support our programs by sending your tax-deductible donations to Living with Victory, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. Podcasts of this and other Living with Victory programs are available at livingwithvictory.org. Thanks for listening.